Liu Keishu is very furious and slams the table with her right hand. In complete anger, she emphasizes the word nightclub and tries to belittle Wu Chen saying his whole family would have worked in nightclubs. She asks how dare Wu Chen slander her by referring her to working at a nightclub and does he know who she is. Wu Chen mocks her asking whether she is accusing him of slandering her and whether she knows that her past cannot be erased by putting on a facelift. Liu Keishu is taken aback by how Wu Chen knows about her been worked in nightclubs and also that she had plastic surgery as it was 10 years ago and no one should be knowing about it. Li Ruobing enters the chat and praises Wu Chen for even having such in-depth information about her and that his intelligence network is better than what she had thought about. Wu Chen tells her that it is too early to admire him as the best part is yet to come. We see Lu Ganian who is the chairman of the Donghai Julie Group and the vice president of the Donghai Chamber walking towards them and asking Keishu about the matter. She hurriedly walks towards her husband and tells him that Wu Chen has insulted her and said her that she worked in a nightclub. She asks him to take revenge on Wu Chen for insulting her. Lu Ganian asks Li Ruobing about who is the guy with her. Ruobing tells her that he is her boyfriend named Wu Chen. Ganian tells Wu Chen that since Ganian is a respected person in Donghai and since he has humiliated his wife, it is equal to slapping Ganian's face and so the matter cannot be solved with just a few words. Wu Chen tells him that there is someone who can solve the matter for him. Liu Ganian questions him whether he thinks that Ganian won't do anything just because he is with Li Ruobing. Wu Chen tells that he is not talking about Li Ruobing but is talking about Ma Huifang. Liu Ganian is completely terrified hearing the name from Wu Chen and asks him if he knows her. Li Ruobing wonders as to what's with Ganian's terrified reaction to Wu Chen's reply. In the meanwhile, Wu Chen requests Mr. Liu to have a small talk with him for a minute in a corner. Mr. Liu accompanies Wu Chen and Wu Chen tells him that he has two stories to tell to him. He tells that the main character of the first story is her wife. It is that ten years ago, she was encouraged by her then-husband to enter a nightclub to make quick money for herself. During this time, she met a very wealthy customer in the nightclub. The customer had started a demolition business and when the person was young, he had a dispute with someone. When the person was released from the hospital, he got to know that it will be difficult for him to have children in the future. The person wasn't able to have children since then and even vitro fertilization was unsuccessful in his case. The doctor had said about this when the person was drunk and when Lu Lijuan got to know about it, she started with her evil plan. She got her facelift and changed her name to Lu Keishu and with the help of her then husband, she became the person's wife. Three months later, she got pregnant, and a baby boy was successfully born. Of course, it wasn't the client's child but the child of Lu Keishu and her then husband. She knew that Ganian could ask for the paternity test, so she bribed a hefty amount to the doctor to lie about it. Wu Chen tells Mr. Liu that even Mr. Liu would have known that the child does not look like him and that he is just trying to deny the reality because he is eager to have a child. The final part of their plan was to get him to die in an accident and inherit the billions of dollars he had in his possessions. Liu Ganian is surprised but denies that he cannot believe the mere words that Wu Chen spoke. Wu Chen tells that his wife's cousin is in his company and that the cousin is her concubine in reality. He warns Mr. Liu that the two of them together are still cheating on him. He explains that Liu Keishu went out with her lover the day before in the afternoon to have an affair. She deliberately took the stairs to avoid the people. He hints to Mr. Liu to check the surveillance cameras to check it himself. Or, he can ask his wife about it but, to know the truth, he would have to swindle about the matter a bit. Mr. Liu goes towards his wife and asks whether she was with her cousin at the office the day before or not. She replies affirmatively and tells that she was in the office until the end of the day. Mr. Liu tells that his cousin told him that they both went outside to talk to a client and were not in the office. Liu Keishu says that maybe her cousin said it by mistake. Mr. Liu instead tells her that he should rather call her cousin to know about it instead. But, Liu Keishu hurriedly stops Mr. Liu from calling her cousin and tells that she remembers that they did go out in the afternoon to talk to a client, but they came back around 2 or 3 and were there in the office the rest of the day discussing about the promotions. 
She questions why is he asking her such questions all of a sudden while the young boy is scolding her and whether he loves her and his son or not. Lou Ganian is angry at her and slaps her on her cheeks telling her to shut up as he has discovered the scandal between her and her cousin. Lou Ganian is in a rage as he orders Lou Keishu to leave immediately as he will talk to her later. He apologizes to Wu Chen and Ruobing about the incident and Wu Chen and Li Ruobing both assure Mr. Lu that they won't tell anyone about the matter. Mr. Lu tells that he just wanted to have a child and didn't know that he would be used like that for it. Mr. Lu seems to have lost all hope as he accepts his fate of being unable to have a child but, Wu Chen denies it informing him that Mr. Lu has a very good son. Mr. Lu is shocked on hearing about it as Wu Chen tells Mr. Lu that he still has the second story left. There was a couple who were childhood friends and one day they fell in love with each other. Both of them thought that now they can spend their lives together living happily. The man soon became wealthy and because of that eventually cheated on her partner. He ran away with his new lover with all his money unknown to the fact that his wife was pregnant. His ex-wife later gave birth to a boy and she even had to cut off from her parents from getting ashamed of having a child from their relationship. The woman was treated like an untouchable but she still raised her child facing all the difficulties on her own. It is out of her hatred that she told her child that his father is dead. Her son has a successful career and started his own family of four, living happily. Wu Chen tells that he can indeed have children and also has a granddaughter. Mr. Lu is delighted and wants to know the name of his son and Wu Chen tells him that his son is named Ma Jiowei after his mother's name. Mr. Lu is concerned as his wife didn't marry any other women and gets to know that his wife doesn't trust men anymore after what happened to her. Wu Chen tells that she lives in Donghai and must have come to know that he became rich. But she never looked at him because it hurts her too much to see him. We see Wu Chen getting something out of his shirt pocket and he brings out a piece of paper informing that his wife's address is in the paper and it is all upon Mr. Lu to find out whether she has forgiven him or not. Mr. Lu gladly accepts the paper and tells Wu Chen that if he can get back with his wife, he will owe a favor to Wu Chen. Ruobing is impressed as she tells that Mr. Lu now owes him a favor and he replies stating that it's a good thing as Mr. Lu can be useful in the future. We are then seeing Wu Chen leaving the car at night telling Ruobing that he will see her the next day. But she calls out to Wu Chen to come back to her as she has something to tell him. Wu Chen goes to the car window and asks about it as she grabs his shirt pulling him over for a kiss. She tells him that Ding Rulong likes to send over people to spy on her, so she wants to bully them. Wu Chen being a Sigma, Leaving everything aside asks whether it is her first kiss as he tells her that her technique is very brutish making his mouth hurt, and leaves shortly after. We are then shown an apartment during the night where two women are talking to each other. These two girls are Lily and Miu Qian Qian, the girl at the bar. She tells her friend Lily that she is hungry and they should go eat something but her friend denies telling her that they need to wait for the young boy she met. Miu Qian Qian tells her friend that she wanted to do what she did that day which makes her friend furious at her as she got brainwashed by a young man and she can't let that guy off so easily. Miu Qian Qian asks whether it was she who told about her to Wu Chen and how did he know so much about her. Her friend is very furious letting her know that she didn't tell anything to Wu Chen and that the most important thing right now is to beat up that pervert. Miu Qian Qian regrets asking about Wu Chen from her friend as she just wanted to know about Wu Chen and didn't expect her friend's reaction to being like this. We then see Wu Chen walking entering the corridor where Miu Qian Qian and her friend are talking. Miu Qian Qian tells her friend that he is Wu Chen and Wu Chen tells them that he is there. Her friend Lily boldly asks Wu Chen, how could he cheat on Miu Qian Qian and that he is a horrible person? Wu Chen in return asks how come she has so much courage to come at him so boldly if she knew Wu Chen was such a bad guy. As he goes into his pocket trying to get something, her friend gets cautious and warns Wu Chen to stay away. But, Wu Chen just pulls out his door keys and tells that he has to open his door. Lily is agitated as Wu Chen ignored her and she was just going to tase Wu Chen but Wu Chen calls out to her not to attempt anything on him. While opening his door, he tells her that Hu Xiaowei is cheating on her. He tells that when Hu Xiaowei went back to Donghai four days ago, 
He first went to see his lover who lives in Unit 201 on 19th Fuyin Road, and after that went to KVT with his friends for a few days. Since he ran out of money yesterday, he came back to her. Lily questions as to whether it is true trying to show she does not believe it. Wu Chen tells her to check it herself by calling him and trying to get the information by other means. Lily being arrogant, tells that she knows men better than him and she will call her boyfriend immediately and prove him wrong. Lily calls her boyfriend and asks about his whereabouts telling him that there is $10,000 in his room drawer. He tells her that he is home and when he gets to know of the money, he tells her that he is unaware of the money and will about it in half an hour to her. Lily rushes in anger as she now knows that her boyfriend is cheating upon her as he is not back home and she will beat him to death. Mu Qian Qian tells her to wait for her as she also wants to join her but Wu Chen grabs Mu Qian Qian by her waist and lifts her with both his hands and asks her that since she is here, doesn't she want to come into the house? Mu Qian Qian asks Wu Chen, why did he pick her up and Wu Chen goes smoothly telling a princess shouldn't get tired, referring to her. She yells at him to put her down as she can walk by herself but Wu Chen continues to walk lifting her as she continuously yells at him to put her down. <laughs> Boy. The scene shifts to the next day morning where we see Wu Chen getting up and sitting on his bed and taking a quick stretch noticing Mu Qian still sleeping on the bed. He asks why is she still sleeping as it is morning. She shouts at him telling him that she didn't get enough sleep because of him and she needs to have her beauty sleep. A paper ball flies over to her side thrown by Wu Chen who tells her that it is his phone number. She can call him if she wants to meet him and doesn't have to just wait outside the house for him to return. She is happy and tells him that it's all the same that is waiting for him to return. We see a masked man in a car following Wu Chen as he gets out of the apartment. Wu Chen notices the guy and then calls someone using his phone. He asks the person on the phone, whether he sent someone to follow him for the day and whether he is still not done. He tells that he is going for training and to visit him on the training grounds to find him. Sometime later we see Wu Chen training. He had mastered the fighting techniques in the past thousand years but his physical fitness isn't good enough and he has to train even more as he has offended Ding Rulong and doesn't know what kind of troubles he will face in the future. We see Wang Zhuang Yuan who is Li Ruotai's right hand man coming up to visit Wu Chen. Wu Chen notices Wang coming up to visit him. We get to know that before, Wang was just a second rate. But because he and Li Tai climbed the ranks of connections, he gained power and was able to expand his influence. In just a few years, Wang became one of the four bosses and the youngest to become one. The four bosses control 90% of the entertainment industry in the East China Sea and are even involved in businesses such as quarry and logistics. Wang nervously tells Wu Chen that he has something to explain to him and that Wu Chen misunderstood him. The person he sent to follow him was to ensure their safety and not for ill intention. Wu Chen tells that Li Ruotai probably doesn't know about Wang sending men to follow him in Ruobing. And since Ruotai is very protective of his sister, if he gets to know about Wang following them, Wang will get screwed. Wang is sweating heavily unable to gulp down realizing what Wu Chen meant. Wu Chen comforts him telling him to relax and if he really wanted to tell Ruotai about Wang, he would have done have not called Wang. Wang asks Wu Chen what he wants in return. Wu Chen calmly tells that he wants to be friends with him. Since he has a lot of subordinates. So, if he is short on manpower, he will ask for his help. Wang is relieved and assures him that he would definitely help him and Wu Chen doesn't have to hesitate to ask for help in the future. Wu Chen thinks that even though he has a lot of information since he is short on manpower, things will get a lot easier now with Wang's help. Wu Chen gets a phone call from Li Ruobing. When Wu Chen answers the phone, she asks him to come to her quickly as something has happened in the company. Wang hands over his car keys to Wu Chen informing him that he has extra pair of clothes as well to change. And if Wu Chen doesn't mind, he would give this as an apology and Wu Chen can use it as his transport in the future. Wu Chen accepts it happily saying it since Wang doesn't mind giving the car to him. We are shown the office, where everyone is worried, trying to contact every other person. 
Wu Chen enters Ru Obing's office where she is talking over the phone asking for someone's health and whether that person can attend the press conference or not and then hangs up after confirming the situation. Wu Chen asks her about the matter and whether something happened. Ru Obing informs that their product spokesman who is a new generation female singer, Dang Zunya has met with a car accident. Wu Chen tells that he helped her yesterday find the traitor and since Ding Rulong found out that they could not steal the information, it seems that they got Miss Dang into an accident so that she could not speak for the new product of the symphony fashion and this obviously is not a coincidence. Ruobing is sad that Ding Rulong did such a thing and he even violated the rules of their bet and even used his family's influence. Wu Chen on the other hand asks whether she wants him to help her find a new spokesperson. She asks that she does need a spokesperson and whether did he find someone for the job? Wu Chen asks whether a national first-class movie star with the Golden Horse Award, the Golden Image Award, and the Golden Rooster Hundred Flowers Film Prize, Tao Man Ying qualified for the position. Ruobing mocks him saying that such a popular movie star would never even meet them let alone be their product spokesperson. She knows that he is trying to help but he shouldn't bluff her like this. Wu Chen places a bet on the same since she doesn't believe him. A bet whether he can get Tao Man Ying to show up in their office tomorrow morning to sign a contract with them. We get to know that Tao Man Ying is a popular first-class actress who was also the first one to enter the ranks of international film stars by sweeping the awards of every major film festival with her major production, The Sword and Autumn Water. She has been receiving many endorsements since then, becoming one of the highest paid actresses in China. Ruobing questions him whether he is saying that he would sign a contract with Tao Man Ying the next morning and whether he is joking as she is now filming abroad and has multiple makeup endorsements to do, so it isn't possible. Wu Chen is adamant telling her to bet on if she doesn't believe him and she readily accepts to make him leave her alone. Wu Chen wants to tell that if he fails to get the contract signed by the next morning, he would pay her $20 million. But, if he wins, $20 million will be very less for the endorsement he will get her and she can't be jealous if he wins. Ruobing wants to know why would she be jealous as they are just pretending to be a couple and she is not in love with him. She tells him to find whoever he likes as she has no right or interest in interfering in his life. Wu Chen seals the deal for the bet going to take a leave but then tells her to put $20 million in his account, hinting that he is already one making Li Ruobing very irritated. Wu Chen comes out of the office calling someone and asking for a favor. We see Wu Chen and Wang walking into a gaming cafe. Wang informs him that all of the men are his brothers who are good at gaming and asks what he wishes to do. Wu Chen tells everyone to turn on their PCs and play the legendary City Lords mentioning a specific version. He instructs him to get all the players registered and go to the third area that opened at 5 o'clock the day before yesterday and use a specific name. We see a panel asking for the name, then he tells everyone to wait in the new player area and recharges his id with $10 million. He recharges it to build a clan waiting for someone to arrive. Four hours later, we see them playing the same game. The players are all hyped up as they have never played with an account with hundreds of thousands of credits in their game id. They have defeated multiple monsters and cleared multiple levels. Wang tells that their clan has suppressed the biggest clan in the server and now has become the biggest clan which has cost them more than 8 million for the levels and equipment. Wu Chen tells him that there are no more casual players on the server and other small clans have quit the game and all that remains on the server is the Dragon Slaughter clan. He tells Wang that it is time to activate the second step of his plan. We see a message popping up informing every player that the King of Hegemon has started the battle against the Dragon Slaughter telling everyone to gather at the main city square. We see everyone fighting in the main city square. Wu Chen tells them to gather at the Chiku Square and prepare for the battle with the Dragon Clan. Another person from the Dragon Clan compliments Wu Chen for making so much fortune in the game telling that maybe Wu Chen is a diehard fan of the game. The person tells that it is still not clear who will win since both clans have similar power. Wu Chen on the other hand tells that the winner will be decided very soon making. The person asks Wu Chen about how he plans to win but Wu Chen denies it stating that the Dragon Clan will win making the person shocked. 
Wu Chen orders everyone from his clan to listen to his order and remove their equipment and get off the game. We see everyone getting off the game which makes the person shocked as he begs like a little kid to Wu Chen to play more with his clan as it is very difficult for them to find an opponent like Wu Chen. He tells that Wu Chen has spent 9 million dollars in the game and if he quits right now, he would not be able to become the boss of the server. Seems like Wu Chen was waiting for this exact moment as his plan succeeded. He tells that he has to go to work since his wife's company is in trouble as the product spokesperson they had agreed on had met with an accident. So, he has to help her find a new spokesperson. The person cheerfully tells Wu Chen that it's a very small task and he can get as many actresses as he wants since multiple actresses work under him. He tells that he is not bragging about it but, he can also call upon Tao Man Ying with just one phone call. Wu Chen tells the person that he has some work to do so let will take a leave as he has to go to East China for a company trip and so he cannot play at the moment. The person is surprised as Wu Chen is also from East China. But Wu Chen takes a leave even when the person tells him to wait for a second. As Wu Chen gets up to leave the gaming cafe, he gets a text from the same player on his phone stating that he got Wu Chen's number by bribing the owner of the private server. He asks Wu Chen to join him at play when he is finished with his business and asks Wu Chen that since they both are in East China, where do they meet? Question mark Wu Chen knew about that person and this is all he planned to lure that person for getting the actress to work for him. Wu Chen replies that the person can decide where to meet as he is in a hurry at the moment. Wu Chen praises the other gamers and relives them of their duties for the day as he receives that the person would be waiting for Wu Chen at the Qing Yuan building in the Zongcheng district. Sometime later, we see the Qing Yuan building where they both get introduced via their in-game name. The other player is the second son of the Lei family of the Hong Fa industry named Lei Cheng who is 42 years old. He introduces himself as Wu Chen to Lei Cheng. Lei Chang asks him as to whether he knows anything about him and Wu Chen butters him well. Chang hooks onto the word reputation as Wu Chen mentioned it in his praises and demands Wu Chen to reveal his family name. Wu Chen tries to calm down the situation telling that Chang shouldn't be afraid as he is not there to harm him. The Hong Fa Lei family is a top 10 industrial company in the nation as their total assets exceed $60 billion. Lei Zhengui is the 70-year-old chairman in the semi-retired state and the main person in charge is Yu Lei Yu. Any major family that comes in contact with Lei Chang is considered a traitor to Lei Yu as Lei Yu has always wanted Chang's life to succeed. Chang is unmoved and demands Wu Chen reveal which family he is from. Wu Chen tells him to slow down as he is not from any family and it is just fate that he was able to meet him. Cheng thinks that he will have to slowly get Wu Chen to reveal his identity and whether he is sent by Lei Yu or not. But seems that he is too young for all this and maybe is a food delivery guy. Cheng wants to know about his wife's problem as Wu Chen has spent so much money on the game but still couldn't even get a spokesperson. Wu Chen tells Cheng not to tease him as he never thought that people would get his spokesperson into an accident. Cheng asks whether this is the reason why he blew so much money in a game to kill people and vent anger on them in the game. Cheng tells Wu Chen not to worry as he swears to help him find a spokesperson and asks about Wu Chen's wife's business. Wu Chen replies that they make cosmetics and it's called Symphony Fashion. Chen tells that so he is Li Ruobing's man and laughs out telling that he should have said about it if he was from the Li family and he thought that Wu Chen was from some other family since he was trying to hide it. Wu Chen clears it telling that he is not considered to be with the Li family as even Sheng would be knowing about Ruobing's relationship with her family. Wu Chen suddenly gets a call from Ruobing and when he answers his phone, Ruobing questions him whether he took $10 million to spend on games. Wu Chen tells her that he cannot explain it to her at the moment and tells her that they can increase the bet if she wants and that whoever loses will have to kneel and apologize to the winner. Ruobing tells him that he is just trying to delay the outcome of the bet. Cheng is surprised as to how Wu Chen is talking to Ruobing and asks about it as he is terrified at the outcome of the event of Li Ruobing kneeling to Wu Chen and wonders who Wu Chen is. Wu Chen tries to snug it off labeling it as couple things and Ruobing being a bit temperamental and they had a bet which has now gotten even bigger. Cheng understands the matter as he invites Wu Chen to drink some tea wanting to know about the bet if he doesn't mind telling. 
Wu Chen tells that someone is trying to mess with his wife's company and he wanted to help her but Ruobing denies it every time being protective of him from Ding Rulong. Chang understands that Ding Rulong got the spokesperson into an accident. Wu Chen adds that Ruobing is afraid that if Ding Rulong discovers about Wu Chen, he would come after Wu Chen and so she is concerned for his safety. Wu Chen tries to put up a good act by asking Chang whether Wu Chen is a dignified man, knowing that Ding Rulong is trying to get his wife from Wu Chen, should he act like a coward hiding somewhere? If he cannot even do something, would he even call himself a man? Cheng is taken by Wu Chen's words as he slams the table and agrees that Wu Chen is absolutely right and orders his men to replace the tea with some wine for the manly talk. He tells Wu Chen that Wu Chen is a man and he won't be a coward anymore and tells him to continue. Wu Chen had made a bet where Ruobing had given him full authority over the company's new product launch and if the press conference goes off without a hitch, then Wu Chen wins the bet else Ruobing will win the bet. He adds that if he loses the bet, he will have to listen to everything she says to him and will have to restrain himself and live like a small boy. After hearing everything, Chang gets excited and tells that he can easily help him in this case as it's just a spokesperson. He immediately calls someone and we see a girl's phone ringing. She picks up her phone and greets him as her father. We see Cheng talking to his daughter telling her to take a leave from her work and come back to East China as there is a very urgent work for her. He tells her that she has to do a cosmetic brand endorsement and not to be afraid of breaching any agreement as he will pay for all the contracts and wishes her good luck ending the call. He shows the phone screen with his daughter's contact information and Wu Chen gets shocked. Deep down in Wu Chen's mind, he knows that this was the result he had planned and it went on very smoothly even though Tao Manying's contract would be a huge amount. He wanted to tell about Lei Yu's affairs as an exchange to Cheng but since he is a friend now who didn't even hesitate to offend Ding Rulong for standing with Wu Chen's side, he will treat him fairly. Cheng tells that they were destined to meet each other and he is just older by a few years so he can call him Brother Sheng from now on. Wu Chen tells that it's alright and they truly were destined to meet each other. Sheng is taken aback as Wu Chen labels it as fate. Wu Chen shows his phone and asks Cheng to read the text message from the phone and we see Cheng's finger trembling after reading the message. Wu Chen tells him to find the owner of the number and get that person. That person will tell him about the truth of his accident which happened 10 years ago and has made Cheng go into a deep mode of shock and fear. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for the next part is very spicy. Also, Make sure to comment on your favorite part of this video. I've been stuck in my way, stuck in my way, stuck in my ways. Shrug a lot of haze, pay is getting it is, but I will never change. I've been stuck in my way, stuck in my way, stuck in my ways. People start to change for a little change, but I don't think it's